10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Hello, welcome to our broadcast. We're so glad you're able to join us again on today. We're going to have an exciting time in the Lord. It is so good and so wonderful to be able to share the word of God with you, especially during a time like this. I am so excited about what the Lord is saying to our hearts, and I just want to share it with you. And I believe that someone is going to be blessed today by this message. And so we want you to pay strict attention to the word as God gives it to me and I give it to you. I believe that you're going to be made better. I believe that somebody is going to get excited about the word of God on today like never before. So God bless you as I pray in Jesus name. I just want to say this before we get started. I want to try to say something that is relevant to the time that we're living in as well as the, the test that we are uh, dealing with at the present time. So I want to uh, use this time to encourage people to inform, to educate, uh, to motivate and inspire you to live for the Lord. So today I want to invite your attention to the ninth chapter of the book of Exodus. And we're going to read verse number one through six uh, out of that book. And we'll take our thought from from that collection of scripture. And I believe that God is going to speak today. It is my prayer that God will speak today. Words of wisdom, words of knowledge that we can understand what we are dealing with and what we are going through and the times that we are facing. All right, let's get at it. Verse uh, number one, chapter nine of the book of Exodus. We're going to read the first six verses. Then the Lord said unto Moses, go in unto Pharaoh and tell him, thus saith the Lord God of the Hebrews, let my people go that they may serve me. For if thou refuse to let them go and will hold them still, behold, the hand of the Lord is upon thy cattle, which is in the field upon the horses, upon the asses, upon the camels, upon the oxen, upon the sheep. There shall be a very grievous moraine. And the Lord shall sever between the cattle of Israel and the cattle of Egypt, and there shall nothing die of all that is the children of Israel. And the Lord appointed a set time, saying, Tomorrow the Lord shall do this thing in the land. And the Lord did that thing on the morrow, and all the cattle of Egypt died. But of the cattle of the children of of Israel died not one. May the Lord add a blessing to the hearing, doing, and receiving of his word. I want to talk to you from verse number five, where the scripture said, the Lord appointed a set time. The Lord appointed a set time saying, tomorrow the Lord shall do this thing in the land. And I want to talk about what we are dealing with today, what we are facing, what we are uh, uh, looking at is an appointed time. It is an appointed time. This is an appointed time. Exodus chapter 9 deals with the fourth plague that God sent upon Egypt. There were 10 plagues all told uh, before Pharaoh finally agreed to let God's people go. Uh, this plague was uh, a plague of... Uh, uh, or called um, a, a harbinger of doom. Uh, the word harbinger during the 11th century meant innkeeper. And by the 12th century, 
the meaning had changed to mean a person who went ahead of a military group called a scout to bring back news. Understand something uh, concerning a scout. A scout was never to make fully contact with the enemy, but he was supposed to bring back intelligence uh, uh, on the enemy as to what the enemy was doing. He was not supposed to try to correct anything uh, with the enemy. He was a news bearer. He was one who brought the news. But eventually the word harbinger came to mean someone or something that announces the arrival of another. Uh, John the Baptist uh, would have been a harbinger uh, because he announced the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, but by the, the 17th century, people were using the word uh, figuratively as we use it today to mean a warning of something positive or negative. Uh, it is most often, though, associated with negativity. It is uh, because this word doom means death or annihilation. And so the phrase harbinger of doom is some, uh, uh, something or someone that signals uh, impending bad events. And so here we find Moses standing before God, receiving instructions to give to Pharaoh concerning God's people. It was a warning to Pharaoh that Egypt was about to have a bad day in a series of bad days to come because we understand that there were six more plagues that came on Egypt before Pharaoh finally succumbed. The demand by God was to persuade Pharaoh uh, to set God's people free. Uh, it is interesting here to compare God's reasons uh, for being free versus man's reason for being free. Uh, the only stated reason that God um, uh, wanted Pharaoh to let Israel go and to be free was so they could worship and serve him. We want to be free so we can do our own thing, so we can do what we want to do. But that's not God's plan. That wasn't God's plan of his freedom, of his liberty. He set us free so that we could worship and serve him. So then we can safely say that when God sends a warning, it is really an ultimatum. Uh, when God sends a warning, because in verse number two, he says, if Pharaoh refuse to let my people go and will hold them still, then he said in verse three, behold, the hand of the Lord is upon thy cattle, thy horses, thy asses, thy camels, thy oxen, and upon thy sheep. There shall be a very grievous Moraine. This word uh, moraine uh, is a serious plague or infectious disease that affect uh, cattle or other animals such as uh, sheep. But 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 that don't have uh, but you don't have nothing to worry about uh, because man can't get it. Uh, it's sort of like the coronavirus. Uh, uh, it, it, it's, 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 it, man can't get it. There is nothing too hard for God. If God wants you to have it, you'll get it. Amen. So if God doesn't want you to have it conversely, you won't get it. And so we have to understand and trust the words of God. And because there is nothing too hard for God, we can't say with a definite article what cannot happen to man. Because God is the controller and the orchestrator of the events of our life. So if God sets an appointed time to do a thing, and, uh, the, and the warning uh, thereof is ignored, God will do the thing which he has declared that he will do because God cannot lie. And so we must understand that God is not lying when he tells us to repent 
and turn from our sins. God is not lying when he tells us that plagues and, 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 and other kinds of calamities will come our way for our disobedience. We must understand this and we must learn how to comply with the demands of God. Uh, <clears throat> the demands of God, they're not options. The demands is not an option. When the governor stated that we are to uh, shelter in, uh, that we are to stay at home. Uh, some of us obey him more than we do God. And, and so, uh, so, but when God gives us a command, he has the power to carry it out. He has the power to relieve us of this present world. So we have to take his commands serious. And so then, so if God sets an appointed time, it's going to happen. His appointed times are not to be ignored. And so God uh, said, uh, what is interesting here is that God can route judgment, though. Uh, uh, you ought to get happy about this one. God can route judgment around his people and wreak havoc upon everything else in his path. God is able to do that. Verse 4 said, the Lord shall sever, shall separate between the cattle of Israel and the cattle of Egypt. You think that this shelter in place has to do uh, is with some kind of punishment. But God is separating the sheep from the goat. God is severing his people from being in uh, peril to what is it we are facing, to this new virus that have come upon uh, us that we don't know how to treat, how to deal with, how to uh, even identify with before it's too late, before the person is actually affected by it. So we got to understand that God is not playing when he say shelter in, when he say stay at home. God wants us to stay at home. He doesn't want us running around. And we're going to talk a little bit more about staying at home after we come back from a break. But I just want you to get in your mind. I got to shelter in. I got to stay home. I'll be right back after this. Welcome back. Thank you for tuning in to the second part of our broadcast. And before we went to break, we were talking about how God can separate his people uh, from uh, the, uh, the gods that are the idols that he's come against and how he can separate his people and keep them safe uh, when all hell's breaking loose in other areas of the world. And so we have to understand that the plagues that God sent upon Egypt were, were against uh, the gods of idol gods of Egypt, not just uh, against uh, Pharaoh himself, but against the idol gods of Egypt, too. And so there were others who suffered, too. So whatever you put before God is an idol. And God said, I'll have no other gods before me. So we have to be careful about idolizing uh, other things in uh, the world uh, ahead of God. Anything you put ahead of, uh, before God is an idol. And so uh, when God severed the separated uh, the cattle of Israel from the cattle of Egypt, uh, uh, he said, there shall nothing die of all that is of the children of Israel. And this is why I believe that this um, shelter in place, this stay home uh, uh, directive, 
I believe that it is appointed of God for us to, to stay at home so that he can protect us so that we can be protected. Now, here's what I've noticed uh, in the short time that we've been dealing with this calamity. Uh, what I have noticed is that disobedience has played an interesting factor in those and many of those. Uh, not all. I, I, I can't uh, qualify to say that. But uh, many of those who have been affected by this have had some degree of disobedience at the forefront. And so I'm just here to warn, I want to warn the saints about disobedience. The Bible says that disobedience is as a sin of witchcraft and stubbornness as a sin of idolatry. And so we have to understand that there are punishment, there, there are consequences of those behaviors and we need to comply. We need to obey the laws of the land just like God has already instructed us to do so that we can be safe, so that we can have victory, so we can survive and get through this time of test and trial. But I do believe that this, uh, according to definition, is a harbinger of doom. It is a harbinger of doom. And God has sent warnings after warnings. And we did not heed them until now the hand of God has beginning to beginning to fall and it's too late to get out of the way because too many people have already died, you know, from uh, this judgment. And so we have to understand and educate ourselves and begin to understand that God is in control of this. And you need to listen to those whom he has appointed over you to give you direction, to give you further instructions on how we ought to act and how we ought to conduct ourselves. All right. And so we want to continue. Um, why do you think God sent you a warning to sh sh shut in place, shelter in place? It is for he's telling you, stay home. Don't mix with nobody. Stay at home. Stay at home. Uh, stay home while I am doing my thing. And when God is finished, we don't have to worry about this, this um, virus dying because it's not going to die until God take it away from us. And the only way we need, uh, uh, need to, the only thing we need to do is to pray and ask God for deliverance. Pray and ask God for healing. Pray and ask God to give us wisdom in dealing with it. Pray and ask God to give us the antidote, give us the code, give us the generic marker, amen, to be able to identify an antidote for this thing. That's what we need to do instead of being proud and thinking that we don't need God's help. No, we need God's help now more than ever before. Anytime you're dealing with a mystery, a secret, you need God's help to reveal the sin, the, 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 the knowledge and the information of the secret so that we can get healing and deliver and get back to our lives, our daily lives. And without the help of God, we're not going to do it. Without the help of God, we have no protection. Glory be to God. And so I don't believe anyone, uh, uh, when God sent the deaf angel through Egypt, I don't believe that anybody stuck their head out the door trying to figure out and see what's going on. I really don't. Because uh, God had told them to shelter in. God had told them, amen, anoint the doorposts of your house and don't come out. Amen. They were, listen, when the deaf angel came to Egypt, they were having a feast. They, 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 all the animals and all the other stuff was being killed and everything was being, but God's people was having a feast. He had told them to kill a lamb of one year, boil it and eat all of it. Don't leave nothing. God was doing his thing and he's doing his thing now. Contrary to popular belief, you may think something else is in control. You may think that something else is happening as a result of what we're facing. But the almighty God is the one I told you before. It's not because of a, a big bang. It's not because of an evolution that ceased to evolution. It is because the hand of God is in this. You ought to be able to see his fingerprint. You ought to be able to see his signet. You ought to be able to see his signature. Those of you who are spiritual, you should be able to see the hand of God's working in this thing. And so we want to uh, stay safe, stay protected by doing what God has instructed us 
to do. And when God sent Moses, when he sent Moses uh, before Pharaoh, he sent a separate message to his people telling them what they needed to do. And I believe that anybody who disobeyed him would have died even at that time. And so we have to understand that it was an appointed time. God, excuse me, God appoints times and seasons that are in his uh, uh, realm, that are in his bosom, that are in uh, 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 his timing, and, and they are according to how he wants to do things. We can't tell God when to appoint a time. We don't tell God when to change a season. Amen. Uh, uh, we have to understand uh, that God is sovereign. He's subject to no other authority, subject to no other power than his own, and we must succumb to the power of God. And until we realize that, this could very well be why we are in the situation that we're in, because preachers have been preaching uh, for I don't know how long, amen, and telling folks to get right with God and do it now. Down at the cross where he bled and died, get right with God. Amen. The time is appointed now for us to get right with God. I believe that the only thing that is holding back complete annihilation, because I believe that this thing have the ability to be a complete annihilation, because we don't know what form, what variation uh, it will take, uh, whether it will come back in the fall. We don't know anything about the future. Only God, amen, knows the end from the beginning. And so we might as well get used to the idea that we're going to have to do what God says because it is he that have made us and not we ourselves. And so therefore we must, amen, look to God, the author and finisher of our faith. And so again, I want you to understand we got to take one more break, but after the break, we'll come back and we'll finish up. Stay with us. Stay tuned. God has some more interesting knowledge for you. God bless you. Welcome back. Again, I'm Dr. Roger L. Green, Sr., pastor and founder of Prayer and Deliverance Worldwide Ministry. Welcome back to the grand finale of our text on today. We have been talking about an appointed time. This is an appointed time. And I want to share with you, and, and, and especially if you're uh, watching this broadcast today and you're not saved, you're not born again. By that we mean baptized in Jesus' name, filled with the Holy Ghost, but the evidence of speaking with other tongues as the Spirit of God give the utterance. That's what we believe constitutes this new birth, amen, that was recorded in St. John chapter 3, verse 1 through 8, when Jesus told Nicodemus, you must be born again of the water and of the Spirit. So uh, two-part salvation. And so we're going to be talking about that. But I want to tell you before we get into all of that, I want to say this to you. If we do what God has commanded, we will be safe. You have nothing to worry about. There's nothing to worry about if we follow God's mandates, if we follow God's commandments, God commands, we will get through this time of trial and test. Amen. So God bless you as I pray in Jesus' name. We will be safe. But if you rebel and choose to do your own thing, well, you will, according to the scripture that uh, when he sent 
the harbinger of doom through Egypt. He said, you, all the cattle will die. Amen. And you, we will too. And not just spiritually, but a physical death this time. You know, people thought, uh, oftentimes think that because uh, they don't see lightning flashing through the sky, uh, that God is, 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 is not minding the, 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 the store. But you got to understand something. God sits high and look holy. He beholds everything. And he's a God that never sleep nor slumber. So he's always awake. His eyes always on us. And so we have to be careful about how we conduct ourselves and what we do and, and that kind of thing. And so this is um, uh, the harbinger, the warning that preachers, teachers, and prophets have been trying to tell us about uh, for a long time now, uh, and, and nobody wanted to listen. Well, I've got one question for you, uh, those of you who choose to be stiff-necked. I have one question, and that question is this. How is that working out for you now? Sometimes you can look back in retrospect and say, well, you know, I wish I had listened. And, and this may be one of those times. When God sent you warning after warning that he had chosen you to be saved, to be a part of the kingdom, uh, and you have ignored him and ran and started doing your own thing, but now God has shut the whole world down. This is not just an America thing. This is not just a, a Charlotte thing or a North Carolina thing. He shut everything down. He shut everything down in America. So therefore, we have to understand that God has singled us out of all the worlds that he has made. He shut us down and it's for a reason to get our attention, to get our attention because we were not listening to those who were delivering messages Sunday after Sunday after Sunday. And because uh, God is, 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 is when he choose you, you must do what God has commanded. Right. And so then uh, don't panic. Uh, I got the antidote. Amen. Right here today. And you don't have to worry. You don't have to panic. Uh, you don't have to buy two more cases of toilet paper. Amen. What you have will suffice. Amen. Remember the woman. Amen. Who had the barrel of, of flour or meal. And she only had one cake left. And the man of God said, make me a cake first. And she made him a cake first, and her barrel did not go empty the whole time of the famine. So, amen, God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above that which you're able to think or ask according to the power. According to, most time people leave that part out, according to the power that now worketh in you. And so you got to, if you don't have the Holy Ghost, if you don't have the power working in you, uh, then uh, you, there's a problem. Uh, but you can get it. We want to see you with it. All right. So here's what I want you to do. Those of you, if you're watching this broadcast and you have not been covered by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. This is what I want you to do. No matter where you are, where you're watching from, uh, this broadcast, who's in your presence, I want you to fall to your knees right now and begin to repent by telling God that you are sorry for your wrong, for any sins that you committed against him, and ask God to forgive you of your sins. And if God, if, if you will ask God to do that, uh, to forgive you of your sin, and you're sorry for, for being hard-headed, you know, I, I, I remember telling my grandmama and my mother uh, many times that I was sorry for being hard-headed uh, because uh, it never paid off, and it's not going to pay off for you either. Uh, God said, the day you hear my voice, harden not your heart as the children of Israel did in the wilderness and provoke God to his wrath. Listen, we are living in America, the dream that God promised Israel. That's why Israel has such an affinity for America. They know the truth. They know the secret of the mystery. They know, but America uh, does not want to acknowledge. I look at America sort of like Judah. When Israel went into captivity, Judah saw it and did nothing and did not fare any better. In 586 B.C., they went in also. So we must listen and learn and look and learn from those who have gone before us. And, and there's been too many examples that we have to draw from now for us to be stiff-necked, hard-hearted, 
and not do what we need to do to get through this. All right. So when you fall on your knees and regardless of where you are, you know what you're doing? You are dropping pride because pride come before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. Listen, you got to learn how to praise God no matter who's watching. Amen. You got to learn how to praise God because the Bible said every knee shall bow and every knee shall confess that Jesus is Lord to the glory of the Father. So therefore, anybody who would ridicule or make fun at you for dropping and falling, they got to do the same thing that you did. And so God bless you. Amen. If you're able to do that, you need to start a dialogue with God right now and, and ask God to forgive you and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. The Bible said he's faithful and just and he'll do just that. And then after you have fallen upon your knees and ask God to forgive you your sins and, and to cleanse you of all unrighteousness, then you need to find you an apostolic church that can baptize you in Jesus name and not get thrown out of the convention. That's what you need to do. And then you need to stay there. Unite yourself with that church Stay at that church because whatever apostolic church you find and you go to and they baptize you in Jesus' name, you are born into the kingdom. That's like you've been born into that family of God. Stay there. Help that man of God. Do everything you can to enhance the kingdom and God will prosper you and keep you safe and bless you, amen, beyond measure. You want the secret to success? You just heard it, amen, and you heard it right here, amen, at Prayer and Deliverance, amen, Tabernacle. So stay in the realm of where God wants you to be and do this thing because God is the one who sent you to this place. He allowed you to hear this message for such a time as this, this is a set time. This is an appointed time. God appointed today for you to give your life to him, be saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost. Have your inoculation. Have your protection against all virus, both known and unknown. God bless you. We love you. Stay encouraged. But before we go, before I go, there's one housekeeping of deal, prayer and deliverance. Amen. I want to thank you for your faithfulness, for your uh, giving of your tithes and your offering, using electronic devices, electronic means. We have not faltered. We have not declined, not one bit. In fact, I'm planning on getting worse. Stay tuned as we continue to propagate the unadulterated, the uncut word of God in Jesus' name. God bless you. Stay encouraged. Stay safe. And give your life to God.